Over the years, I've bought a lot of Wii U games. For me, this was the perfect system to collect games for, since the prices were really cheap and I loved the physical presentation of the games, manuals, and discs. I'm pretty proud of the collection I have so far, even though there's still a few more I want to get eventually. In total, I own 57 Wii U games currently, and that's just my physical games, not including digital eShop titles. So today, I thought it'd be fun to go over each and every Wii U game I own and give a super quick mini review for each one. This way I get to show off, uh, I mean share my collection with all of you while giving my thoughts on each game. Now I haven't fully beaten every one of these games, but I have played all of them for a decent amount of time. Am I qualified to review this many games in rapid succession? No, definitely not. So don't take these micro reviews too seriously. This is just supposed to be for fun. These reviews are going to be really short to keep this from turning into a massive project. Just two or three sentences for each game with some simple gameplay I captured put in the background. They won't be ranked from worst to best or anything, as that takes way too much brain power. I'll just be going in the order that I randomly grab them from a pile. Now let's get started. Starting off strong with Splatoon, which just might be my favorite Wii U game of all time. It's a fresh take on the shooter genre that's endlessly fun to play, full of style and charm, has a great single player story mode, and it's the first game in one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Batman Arkham Origins gets a lot of crap, and while it might be the weakest Arkham game, it's still a great Batman adventure with an amazing layer of Christmas theming thrown on top. Great boss fights too. Star Fox Zero maybe isn't quite as bad as people make it out to be, but it is still pretty bad. The levels are fun enough, but the controls are just terrible. It's gamepad gimmickiness at its worst, and the whole game feels kind of uninspired. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of the greatest 2D platformers ever made, thanks to its genius level design, gorgeous visuals, and incredible soundtrack. I absolutely love this game, and you should definitely play it yourself if you haven't already. LEGO City Undercover is easily my favorite LEGO game, since it tells its own unique story instead of relying on movies. Chase McCain fighting crime and exploring this big open world of LEGO City is peak LEGO gameplay. Disney Infinity 3.0 is a playground for you to run around in full of recognizable characters and franchises, sadly tied to the very expensive Toys to Life model. There's some really great content to experience here, although a lot of it is kind of unpolished. Hyrule Warriors is the ultimate Zelda fanservice game, only it's missing important elements of actual Zelda gameplay like exploration and puzzles. But if I'm going to play a combat-focused strategy game, it may as well be themed around this amazing series. New Super Mario Bros. U is a great game that came out at a bad time. It's a really solid 2D Mario game that can be a lot of fun, it just doesn't feel particularly impressive as the fourth New Super Mario Bros. game, but now that some time has passed, I can appreciate it for what it is. Minecraft is the highest selling video game of all time, and this was the first time it appeared on a Nintendo console. It's an open-ended sandbox experience that has infinite possibilities for player customization and memorable moments. Personally, I always enjoy just starting up a fresh survival playthrough. Rayman Legends has gameplay and controls that flow together so naturally that it's a ton of fun to play through these super well-designed levels. I especially love the music-based ones. This is probably the best third-party game on the system, and I really hope we get a follow-up someday. Legend of K Anniversary Edition is your average early 2000s 3D platformer, which means I enjoy it despite how clunky it can sometimes feel. The updated graphics aren't mind-blowing, but it can look pretty nice at times. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes is a game that I played a ton of back in the day. I hardly even remember playing through the actual levels, as all I ever wanted to do was fly around and explore the open hub world of New York City. There's tons of characters to unlock, with some pretty cool movesets and animations. FIFA 13 is a pretty typical EA Sports game, but for some reason I really like messing around in the training area. It's probably what I spend the most time on, which is weird. I'm very sad they didn't include the mode from FIFA 09 where you play as Mies, as that's legitimately the best soccer game I've ever played. Need for Speed Most Wanted You is apparently the worst Need for Speed game according to the internet, but that didn't stop me from enjoying the crap out of it. Racing around the hub world in various expensive supercars and outrunning the cops is a blast. Xenoblade Chronicles X is unlike the rest of the series as the story and narrative aren't really the main focus. Instead, it's the massive and expansive open world of Planet Mira. This is possibly the most visually impressive game on the system, and even though it confuses me non-stop, I still love playing it. Terraria is a classic from my childhood. I can get lost in this game for hours on end, digging down to the underworld, climbing up to the cloud islands, fighting giant bosses and building the most over-the-top castle-themed home base. Great music, too. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U may seem a little underwhelming now that we have Ultimate, but it's still a really good Smash game with a slightly different feel to the gameplay. But I can't play as Inkling or Steve in this one, so I take it back. It's not good anymore. Wii Party U is a fantastic party minigame board game type thing, like Mario Party but with Miis. There's a ton of great but also strange uses of the gamepad. For local multiplayer, there's a lot of content to dive into. This one feels like a straight up Wii game that just happens to have HD visuals, which is fine by me. Yoshi's Woolly World is a very underrated and underappreciated 2D platformer with a great visual style, awesome levels, and a terrific soundtrack. I love how many different types of playable Yoshis you can unlock, and the connected hub world is awesome too. It makes me very sad that Crafted World has sold twice as much as this masterpiece. 
Breath of the Wild is the refresh that the Zelda series needed at the time, bringing a whole new level of exploration to the open world format. An absolutely incredible experience that blew me away the first time I played it, and it's still impressive nearly six years later. I can't wait for Tears of the Kingdom. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is about as terrible as you might have heard. There's barely any content here, and the gimmick of turning big is boring and uninteresting. It hardly even changes the gameplay at all. This was a real low point for the Wii U library. Why did I buy this? LEGO Marvel Avengers is basically the same game as LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, except now it's sunset in the hub world. The levels in this one are pulled from across random MCU movies and it feels really disconnected, but it's still a pretty fun LEGO game and it's cool to see all the updated designs for the characters. Pikmin 3 is full of gorgeous environments you explore as tiny captains commanding Pikmin. The real-time strategy gameplay of the Pikmin series is arguably at its best here, although I have yet to really dive into this series myself so I can't say for sure, but what I have played of 3 I've really enjoyed. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is a little bit hard to go back to since I really got into this series with Monster Hunter Rise, but it's also a lot of fun in its own way. The mechanics are a lot more brutal, there's overall less room for error, and call me crazy, but I actually kind of like fighting monsters underwater. Nintendo Land is one of my all-time favorites. It's local co-op perfection with a beautiful Nintendo theme park atmosphere. I just made a 25 minute long video breaking down all the reasons why this game is so incredible, but basically, I really like it and it's very good and you should play it. We Fit U is the ultimate Wii Fit game, with tons of exercise related minigames that take place on Woohoo Island, which means I automatically love it. I wish more people could play this game, as it's really great. I actually play this one a lot and it's always super enjoyable. Disney Infinity doesn't have as many characters or franchises as its sequels, but it feels like a more streamlined experience because of that. The three storylines that come with the base game are all pretty good, with the Pirates of the Caribbean one being my favorite, but honestly just screwing around in the toy box is the best part of this game. Deus Ex Human Revolution isn't really the type of game I normally play, as I'm usually the type to go in with guns blazing rather than sneaking around stealthily, but I can still appreciate the stealth mechanics and engaging story. But by far the worst part about this game is that the physical version has a black spine for some reason which looks horrible in a collection. Okay, so I might have lied when I said I've played every Wii U game I own, because I still haven't even opened my copy of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I just find it funnier to keep it sealed. If I had to guess though, I would say this one is probably just as bad as everyone says it is. LEGO Dimensions was sadly too late to the Toys to Life party to really become popular, which is a shame because LEGOs are perfect for that concept. There's an impressive level of crossovers here. There's Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Sonic, and most importantly, Ninjago. Bayonetta 2's super over-the-top action set pieces are really cool to play through. I probably should have started with the original though, as I don't understand basically anything that's going on in the story. But what I do know is that the gameplay is seriously fun. This game is like a wild roller coaster of epic action, and it's amazing. Mass Effect 3 is similar to Bayonetta 2, where I feel like I probably should have played the previous games first, but that doesn't stop me from enjoying it. I haven't played a ton of this one, but the many different decisions to choose from are really cool and the cover-based shooting is solid. I'm looking forward to playing this one more. Zombie U is notable for its unique use of the gamepad screen, where trying to switch between looking at two different screens adds to the stress and horror. I like the premise that once you die, you're gone for good, and you restart as a different survivor entirely. A pretty average zombie survival horror game that's made better by some clever mechanics. LEGO The Hobbit is like an upgraded version of LEGO Lord of the Rings, except it's not actually that much better. The graphics look nice in HD, but they only ever did the first two movies in the trilogy, and just never finished the game with the third one. Everything good about this one is taken from the original game, so you're better off just playing that one. Batman Arkham City is probably the best Batman game ever made, thanks to its fantastic story, satisfying combat, and big city to explore. This game has gotten so much praise over the years for a reason. It's a dream come true to take down a room full of goons as the Bat himself. Twilight Princess HD is the best way to play one of the best Zelda games. This game has some of the strongest story, dungeons, combat, and boss fights in the whole series, and the upgraded visuals make it an even better experience. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is legitimately one of my favorite kart racers. Transforming between racing on the ground, flying through the sky, and zooming across the water feels amazing. Wait, why is Wreck-It Ralph here? Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is Nintendo flexing their puzzle-making skills while giving Toad the spotlight which he very much deserves. There's so much clever level design packed into these tiny levels, and Toad is as charming as ever. Epic Mickey 2 is kind of not good. It runs pretty badly on the Wii U, and the controls feel awkward and forced. But it is a decently fun, if unpolished, 3D platformer with a lot of personality. This one's probably a lot better on the Wii, where you can actually use a Wii remote like normal. NES Remix Pack is a super fun way to re-experience some of the classic NES games, adding unique objectives that shake things up and keep it exciting. When it comes to replaying a lot of these older games, this game is the perfect way to do it. Wii Sports Club is a pretty bad follow-up to the greatest piece of art ever made in human history, as it's just a worse looking and worse controlling version of the first Wii Sports. It feels empty and lifeless, and the confusing release strategy somehow made things even worse. Rodea the Sky Soldier is a really strange one because the Wii U copy of the game is awful. It looks and plays horribly. 
but also included is the original Wii version, which not only looks infinitely better, but also plays way better too. This version of the game is actually great, and it's a shame that it got overshadowed by the crappy Wii U and 3DS ports. Paper Mario Color Splash is an okay Mario RPG, but there are some dumb decisions that hold it back. The environments, music, and writing are all fantastic, but having to constantly manage your cards to attack is boring and frustrating. Super Mario 3D World is like a combination of Mario's 2D and 3D adventures, bringing together both styles of gameplay into one terrific package. The movement is perfectly fine-tuned for the level design, and the soundtrack and presentation are just amazing. Madden NFL 13 is actually the last Madden game to release on a Nintendo console, and it's pretty good I guess. The career mode is cool, but it was better in the Wii version with the overworld map thing they did, but the Wii U version obviously looks way better visually. The wonderful 101 has crazy beat-em-up action and explosive level design, with a super cool mechanic of controlling tons of tiny superheroes at once. This one has a lot of personality and charm, as well as really enjoyable combat. Disney Infinity 2.0 is the one I've played the least of out of the three games, so I don't have very much to say about it. Introducing Marvel superhero characters was awesome, but it does feel like they focus on that a little too much. LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens has very polished and enjoyable gameplay, but it stretches out the content of just one movie into an entire game, which isn't great. Compared to the Complete Saga or Skywalker Saga LEGO games, this one's pretty weak. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is my favorite Assassin's Creed game, out of the two that I've played. I've always loved pirates and sailing the seas, so I actually had a really good time with this game. Shovel Knight is a fantastic retro 2D platformer with great art design and awesome music. Using the shovel to bounce around and defeat enemies feels great. It's one of the most famous indie games for a reason. LEGO Jurassic World is another LEGO game, but this time it's based on the Jurassic Park movies. And, I don't know, I'm running out of things to say about all these LEGO games. Once again, the open world hub area is my favorite part. SteamWorld Collection combines together two of my favorite indie games of all time, with both being in very different genres. SteamWorld Dig is a terrific Metroidvania, and SteamWorld Heist has amazing turn-based combat. Mario Kart 8 has gorgeous HD racetracks with the best feeling gameplay in the whole series. The track design is seriously next level. Basically all of them are incredible. The battle mode is not good though. Sonic Lost World is a game I wish I could enjoy, but the movement is just way too clunky and frustrating. There are some pretty cool DLC levels with Zelda and Yoshi though, and the music is great as always. Wind Waker HD is the best way to play one of the best Zelda games. Wait, have I said that already? The cell shaded style somehow looks even better, and the whole atmosphere of exploring the Great Sea is just incredible. Plus it has Tingle. Assassin's Creed 3 is apparently the third game in a trilogy of a continuous storyline, where once again I haven't played the previous games. The setting of Revolutionary America is pretty awesome, and the stealth and combat gameplay is very enjoyable. And last but not least, there's Super Mario Maker. One of the best uses of the gamepad. Creating levels using the stylus on the touchscreen just feels so natural. There's plenty of fantastic user-created levels, and also a lot of trash ones too. And that's my entire Wii U collection. I'm sure I'll still get a few more games, but honestly I'm pretty satisfied with what I have so far. It was a lot of fun to go over all these games so quickly. It's always important to appreciate what games you have sitting around. And if you guys like this video, maybe I'll do the same thing for my Switch library of games someday. And that brings us to the end of this video, and the end of my Wii U month celebrations as a whole. I really enjoyed making these Wii U videos for its 10th anniversary, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching them. Sorry this last one came out a little later than planned, some stuff came up so I had to delay it. Leave a comment talking about your Wii U collection, and I'm gonna go to sleep because I am very tired. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see ya in the next one.